Welcome back to Creating Your Life on Money and Wealth. This is episode 33, A History of U.S. Money. Mark Andre Alexander, back for more on Money and Wealth. Um, this is episode 33. We're quite getting quite a ways into this whole Creating Your Life segment. And before I go any further in this episode, I want to remind you, don't freak out. <laughs> what I'm about to talk about um, sometimes sets some people off. They want to do political change. They want to resist the government and the IRS and that kind of thing. That's not what I'm advocating at all. Um, what I'm trying to do with this series is very simple. Give you some information about how language works about how definitions mean something and how if definitions change the perception of things also change and that people take advantage of you when you don't really understand what's really going on and they often will do that by changing the language this is how con artists work this is how well-intentioned people wanting to enlist your support for their cause will work um, and that's fine. That's just what they do. Um, what I'm trying to do, though, is clarify things so you can make better decisions and remain more free personally in your life. Uh, I'm not advocating that groups get together or do anything. I'm all about the individual. So what I'm going to do today is take you through a history of U.S. money. And if you've been following up to this point, um, you know that we've been talking about how a goldsmith back in the old days would store gold for people and give out IOUs, you know, essentially saying, we'll pay to you so much, you know, minus a service fee that I'm storing this gold for you. And then at a certain point, it changed to be redeemable without the person being named. So it would say something like, we'll pay to the bearer on demand, you know, 100 ounces in gold on deposit with me, Jack Smith, the goldsmith. And how it got to a point, for example, in our ideal world of Gold Island, but then particularly on Silver Island, where there's, you know, both good and bad people, conscious and unconscious con artists, where a goldsmith on Silver Island would start thinking, hmm, people are exchanging these IOUs as if they're money without redeeming all of them. What would happen if I printed up extra ones and just spent them into the system? You know, extra notes so that let's say there's a hundred thousand ounces of gold on deposit, and the notes out there represented a hundred thousand ounces that could be redeemed. The point being that the paper notes were not money, only the gold on deposit is money. The paper notes are symbolic representation of money. But at a certain point, the goldsmith prints up extra notes, so maybe he pr prints up an extra ten thousand notes saying that there's another 10,000 ounces of gold, creating money out of thin air, spending it as if it is. And how this creates kind of economic inflation, the expansion of this m supply of notes out there representing real money, um, creates an imbalance that has to be paid for, but it results in rising prices. And the person printing up the extra notes won't necessarily be held accountable for that businesses might be held accountable. So I'm going to talk, talk now, that's more in theory. Let's look at some reality here. And again, think through what I'm about to do and understand that what I am attempting to do here is to clarify definitions of things so you can make better money decisions. So let's look back to um, earlier days. Uh, in, from 1863 to 1934, there was something called a gold certificate. And if you, if you look at it closely, you can see what it says in full. At the top, it says, this certifies that there have been deposited in the treasury of the United States of America $10 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. This is a classic example of where this note is an IOU. It is not money. Notice uh, in the little gold um, certificate circle there, the, the seal, it says this certif certificate is a legal tender in the amount thereof in payment of all debts, public and private. So this can be used to exchange ownership of that gold, gold coin, that is on deposit in the United States Treasury. So this is a legitimate IOU 
uh, and the government holds the gold. Okay, so that, that was 1863 to 1934. Now let's look at a silver certificate from 1886 to 1963. And it says, silver certificate. This certifies that there is on deposit in the treasury of the United States of America, $1 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. This certificate is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Okay, so look what we have now. We have a silver certificate, again, a legitimate IOU that's redeemable so that people who had this during the years 1886 to 1963 could go to the government and demand to have the silver, $1 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. Now, this being a legitimate and the gold certificate being legitimate, no problem. Now, you remember it, the gold certificate only went up to 19, or 1934 when President Roosevelt withdrew the redeemability for gold. So everybody was on silver, even though the government still hold the gold, held the gold. And they made various, had various very reasonable explanations for this, apparently. Okay, let's look at the next note. This is the first Federal Reserve note. The Federal Reserve came into being in 1913. And uh, notice how it's, the language has changed a bit. In the outside, it says Federal Reserve note, the United States of America will pay to the bearer on demand $5. Now, notice it doesn't say $5 of what? Remember, the term dollars is a unit of measurement. If I went up to you and I said, hey, I would like to uh, give you a gallon. And you'd look at me going, uh, what? I said, yeah, I want to give you a gallon. You would, you would want to know, well, a gallon of what? A gallon of gas? A gallon of milk? A gallon of water? What are you talking about? In other words, for me to say, I'm going to give you a gallon means nothing. It's just a unit of measurement. The same is um, true of the term dollars. It's a user, user uh, it's a kind of measurement, a term. So what what is a dollar? If I said I was going to give you $5, you'd say, well, what are you going to give me $5 of? $5 of gold? $5 of silver? What? It doesn't mean anything by itself. Now, this is still a legitimate note. Why? Because look at the fine print above the big C seal. It says redeemable in gold on demand at the United States Treasury or in gold or lawful money at any Federal Reserve Bank. Now, notice this goes up to 1933s, 1913 to 1933. So at that time, you could get gold or whatever was called lawful money. So now we have this idea of lawful money introduced. And also, the, the note itself, though, notice is starting to disentangle the term dollars from what it is measuring. But this still could be redeemed. Let's look at the next one. This is a Federal Reserve note from 1934 up to 1963 again. Federal Reserve note, United States of America will pay to the bearer on demand $500. So again, we have this continuation of the idea that um, dollars are disconnected from things. But notice again, the, the language above the big B. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, and is redeemable in lawful money at the United States or United States Treasury or at any Federal Reserve Bank. Now, what's happened here? There's no mention of gold. There's no mention of silver. There is mention of something called lawful money. What and lawful money meaning by law we're saying this is money. So at this point, you have a Federal Reserve note. And during these years, it could be exchanged for silver, even though it doesn't say that on there. But you still have this disconnect. You have this continuing succession of the ideas of changing the definitions of things. Okay, so let's go to our final note, one that you're more familiar with. This is called a Federal Reserve note. These were printed up and first distributed um, in 1963, near the end of the year, around the time of JFK's assassination. No causal effect there. <laughs> but the idea is, Federal Reserve note, United States of America, $1. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Notice how the definition has changed. This is $1 itself. It doesn't say it's a dollar of silver or a dollar of gold. It doesn't even say a dollar of lawful money. It doesn't in any way 
say that it's even redeemable in, for anything. What happened in 1963 and 64 is that they began withdrawing silver from circulation. They had already withdrawn gold from circulation, but the silver uh, was being withdrawn. So what would happen is you could go to your bank and you could have, say, 10 silver dollars and you would give it to them. And then as you're walking, you know, to be deposited in your checking account or savings account, then as you walk away, you remember that, oh, my daughter, she, um, she it's her birthday today. I was going to give her a silver dollar. So you go back because they had given you, um, you know, you'd given them the silver. So you'd want one back. And they'd say, I'm sorry, we're withdrawing silver from circulation. But here's a Federal Reserve note. It's the same thing. In other words, they wouldn't give you back the silver dollar, but they'd give you this note in its place. Everything changes at that point. Now, there is no constraint on printing up what they now call paper money or fiat currency so that you could start printing this up and having extra notes out there and you can inflate the currency. Government now can start getting people in or getting the entire population into debt. When Nixon back in, you know, back in, well, what is it, late 60s, early 70s, there was something happening where France was not trusting these Federal Reserve notes anymore and started cashing everything and they wanted um, gold. Because at that time, even though Americans couldn't own gold, foreign governments with Federal Reserve notes were backed by gold. They started to run on Fort Knox, in a sense, and Nixon, to stop the whole thing, uh, took us off the gold standard. And as a result, everything changed. In fact, you might remember back at that time, gold was $35 an ounce. It had been maintained at that for many, many years, for decades, in fact. Um, and then uh, also around those times, you know, more expenditures were happening. I mean, once we tr transitioned to Federal Reserve notes in 63, War in Vietnam started up and got stronger and was being financed through this. And prices started to rise. If you, you know, bread prices at that time were maybe 20, between 25 cents, 50 cents. Gas was 35, 40 cents. Everything started rising as they started creating more of these notes. So here's the kind of view of them all, this whole kind of transition through it. What we're going to do now in the next episode is talk about credit and debt. And I think, uh, I think you'll have some interesting things to learn about the fact that credit and debt are the same thing at the end of the day. And it's all designed to en enrich other people. Until then, um, check out MarkAndreAlexander.com and my book, Money, Money and Wealth, What You Should Have Learned as a Teen.